Hello, this is MakerJ11, and as I mentioned in my last video, which you should go watch before you watch this video, um, I'm going to build an internal combustion engine attempt. Um, so, so far I've come across a couple of kinks, um, just in the planning stage, I already basically had it all brainstormed out how I was going to do it, but um, there's some some changes and things that I'm going to have to make because I've realized some different things as I've done research and, um, among other things, just more thinking. So, <clears throat> So, so, so. So, I'll first give you an introduction just to how an internal combustion engine works, basics. So, if you really want to know, go um, read the wiki already of Cole on it, or watch some videos or something, because um, I'm not going to do a very thorough um, explanation of how it works. But, anyways, basically your intake would be here, and there'd be a little check valve or read valve in here, right here that would allow the gas air mixture, the new clean gas air mixture, to flow only one way. So, that's your crankcase here and your piston. So your piston has several ports that are built into it. There's no valves in this. The piston acts, acts as your valve. So you have your intake here, and, or your exhaust there, and your intake is over here. These slots here are, are the intake. So basically when the piston moves up and down, it opens and closes those different um, ports there and allows gases to flow in and out of the cylinder. So what happens is your cylinder starts out, um, let's say it just starts out in the down position, um, so it's just compressed a gas air mixture, it, the spark plug down here fires, and so you get a combustion inside there. So what happens, your piston starts moving back, um, the energy is transmitted from that, from the initial explosion, is transmitted to your crankcase, to your crankshaft and everything, makes your engine spin. So as it comes back, it slowly, it opens, it first opens this exhaust port here, which lets the high pressure exhaust gases escape into the exhaust manifold. A little bit after that, the um, intake ports here are also opened. So they're uncovered and allow the, so as this is coming back, so as it goes forward, when this um, piston goes forward, it creates a vacuum in your crankcase and lets the new gas air, the air gas mixture to flow in. There's a check valve there, so when it starts coming back, back, that check valve closes and actually pressurizes those gases in there as the piston moves back. And when it uncovers these ports, the slightly pressurized gases in here rush into the, the cylinder, pushing the rest of the exhaust gases out of the exhaust and then it goes back down and goes for another cycle. So pretty simple, really. Um, sort of. In my opinion, it's simple. So, so how to make one? That's the problem. Um, so a normal internal combustion engine has a um, compression ratio of around between six and ten percent, or a six to six to one ratio to ten to one ratio. It depends on the engine, the manufacturer, and everything like that. This engine here, this two-stroke, has a 10 to 1 ratio, which is about the maximum you really want for a internal combustion engine without having pinging and using special fuels. So that's what I'm going to try to shoot for is about 10 to 1. I'll probably do more like 8 to 1 just because of different factors that I need to take into consideration and complications. So, so this is the spark plug I'm going to use, and I'm going to use this little, uh, I think, at least at this point, I think I'm going to use this little brass um, thing to thread it into, and I'll probably solder that on the end of the copper this copper pipe. So I'm going to I was going to originally going to think about using this one inch copper pipe as my piston or cylinder, but I decided against that just because it's going to be too big and not not necessarily too big, but I just don't necessarily trust that much gases exploding, and it might explode. So yeah, I'm going to go with the smaller one and. Um, yeah, I'm not really going for power with this engine, I'm just going for functionality, that it actually works. And just to, just to demonstrate that I can build, that I just just to try to build an internal combustion engine without using any machine shop tools or anything like that. Using stuff you can buy, um, or take stuff apart and find stuff. So, so this is going to be my spark plug. I was originally going to build a spark plug, but I decided that would be stupid because it would put more factors in there that aren't going to make it, that lower the chances of it working, basically. Um, 
So I figured out that in order to have a compression ratio of about um, 10 to 1, I'm going to need to have a pretty large, um, uh, what's it called, throw on my cylinder. So the piston's going to have to go back and forth about 60 millimeters in order to get a compression ratio of about 10 to 1, just because um, the amount of space here is, on this spark plug is not optimal. It's about, oh, probably about 7 millimeters is about the closest I'm really going to be able to get the piston, 6 millimeters. So if I have 6 millimeters of space there at the end of the piston, at the end of the um, cylinder, then that means that my cylinder is going to have to be 60 millimeters long in order to get a compression ratio of uh, 10 to 1. So I could probably take that down a little bit, have my exhaust in, in that port's about here, somewhere in here. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, so the other problem with this, having a cylinder that long, is that this piston will have to cover your exhaust port because when this, when the piston goes down to compress those, the new gases, the gases in the cylinder, if, if the, um, the new gas air mixture behind the piston it can't, it can't, it'll flow out of the exhaust port, which is not good. You don't want that to happen or else it'll, it could either ignite the gases back there or you could just lose the pressure and it wouldn't, wouldn't work. So the piston actually has to cover the exhaust port at all times except when the piston comes all the way back. So if you have your exhaust port here, so that's your exhaust port, this piston needs to cover that at all times except when it comes back to actually exhaust the the gases out of the cylinder, the, the spent gases. So I'm going to need a piston that's almost like that long, well, not quite that long, more like uh, that long, a little bit longer than that even, in order to get a compression ratio that I want. So I think what I'm going to have to do is probably design my um, my head, my cylinder head here first, and try to get as minim the minimal amount of uh, area here wasted as I can, so I can um, decrease the amount of surface or the amount of area that is. Um, so I can increase my compression ratio and make my stroke smaller. So yeah, that's that's my my thought so far. So I'm gonna have to build this first. So I'm gonna build my um, that's what I'm gonna work on first. Is just building my my cylinder head. So let's do that. All right, just cut this copper plate out of um, <clears throat> this copper sheet I have. And uh, it's pretty thick stuff, probably, it's about as thick as the pipe, um, probably about a quarter, eighth inch, quarter inch, something like that. So I'm gonna need to cut a hole in the middle for the spark plug, and then I'm gonna need to make it round so that it'll fit on the end there. And uh, eventually maybe I can fit cooling fins or something over top of it if I need to. That's why I'll make it round, and then I'll solder that onto the end here. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, cut that out. I guess I'm probably going to use the angle grinder, either that or drill a hole in the middle and then stick it in the drill press. Alright, well, there's the end cap. So I just have to take the bolt out now, and it's the perfect size, same size as the uh, copper pipe there. All right, well, there's a nice copper disc, and I uh, just got to cut a hole in it big enough for the spark plug to fit through now. So, or, well, so it can be soldered on there. So it's just going to be a little loop, and I'm just going to use my step drill to do that. Well, the ring or the head sure didn't uh, turn out very centered, but I think that should be alright. So you can see here, I'll probably put the um, spark plug like that and it should be just fine. But it does match the size of the pipe real nice, so it's a perfect fit. So now I just have to uh, solder my spark plug holder on there, nut, and then um, solder it on the end of my cylinder. Well, after I calculate my cylinder size and everything like that and make my piston. So, uh, yeah, that, that looks pretty good, though.
I'm happy with that. Now to solder the two pieces together. So I've got them clamped together and I'm going to use this flux. This is my favorite flux. It works. I've also tried a couple other fluxes like this stuff. And this works by far the best. And I bought this on Amazon for like $8 or something. It wasn't bad. But this stuff works amazing. So I'm going to just put some of this on here. Flux is your best friend when you are soldering stuff. So use a good bit of it. Not too much, of course. But you want enough on there. So, uh... That should be enough. All right, now let's uh, use my soldering iron to solder this because I love soldering stuff with my soldering iron. So, uh, apply some solder to the tip there, and the part that takes the longest is just heating up the whole, the whole piece, everything. So, just keep applying heat until it starts melting. And if it's a really large piece, you're going to need to uh, apply some extra heat with a flame or heat gun or something. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's go to the other side here. Put some on here. Once you get that heated up, it flows on there real nice. I love, I just love how it flows so easily. There's a nice even bead all the way around there. Let's apply a little bit more over here, get a good strong joint. It's also kind of important to keep it level too, or else this hot will all flow to one side. 